Okay, in this video, we're going to start looking at Markov chains a little bit more, and we're going to look at, we're going to start talking about what are called regular Markov chains. Okay, so I'm not actually going to define them just yet in this example, but just sort of a, a lead up to why regular Markov chains are important. What I am going to talk about in this video are going to be what are called stationary matrices or stationary matrix and steady state Markov chains. Again, I'm not really going to do uh, any, any sort of computations. Um, I have done computations, but I'm not going to work them out just because they're tedious. Um, I'll certainly show them to you, though, but we'll introduce these, these ideas. Okay, so suppose we've got an example. Uh, we've got a company that initially has a 10% market share of whatever. And they're going to use an advertising campaign. And with that advertising campaign, we're able to come up with a transition matrix given by the following. So our transition matrix P in our first row, we have entries 0.8 and 0.2. In the second row, we have entries 0.6 and 0.4. The first row and the first column are going to correspond to uh, brand A. And we'll, we'll assume that our, uh, the company that has a 10% market share will call their brand brand A. And A prime uh, means, uh, so A is going to correspond to you, that somebody uses brand A. A prime means they use a different brand. So again, from our, our transition, transition matrix, it says, what it says is it says if somebody already uses brand A, under this advertising campaign, there'll be an 80% probability that they'll keep using brand A. If they use brand A initially, there's a 20% probability that they'll switch to some other brand. So if somebody initially doesn't use brand A, there's a 60% uh, probability that they'll start using that brand. And likewise, it says if they don't use it originally, there's a 40% probability that they'll keep using something different. Okay, so if these probabilities in our transition matrix, if they remain valid over a long period of time, what's going to happen to the company's market share? Are they eventually going to get the whole market? Um, will it kind of oscillate between values? Or, you know, maybe it'll actually sort of uh, level off at some, some particular share. So our initial uh, state matrix would have values 0.1 and 0.9. Again, it says that 10% uh, of the market belongs to brand A, and 90% of the market belongs to its competitors. So again, this could be, you know, we've got uh, some amount of time. Maybe let's assume that this, this, is, 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 this, this transition matrix is maybe uh, information per month. Okay, so if we look at what happens one month later, we take the initial uh, market share, we multiply it by that transition matrix. So again, we would just take 0.1 multiplied by 0.8, we would take 0.9 multiplied by 0.6, add those values together, we would get 0.62. And then we would take 0.1 multiplied by 0 0.2, 0 0.9 multiplied by 0.4, add those values together, and get 0.38. So again, what this tells us is, it says one month later under this advertising campaign, it says now brand A has 62% of the market, and the competitors only have 38%. So pretty good little advertising campaign there, right, to jump from 10% of the market to 62% of the market. So we could keep this up, you know, maybe they keep this advertising campaign going. Well, if we want to figure out what happens two months later, well, again, we now have to sort of update our information because they have 62% of the market, 38% belongs to its competitors. Again, we would multiply by the transition matrix P. And now it turns out that brand A has 72.4% uh, and its competitors have 27.6%. So, you know, its market share is clearly going up, but it certainly didn't jump uh, as much, right? You know, it jumped a lot after the first month, and it still jumped by a, a fair amount the second month, but certainly not as much. Well, we could keep this process up, and, you know, I, I got lazy here and stopped writing out our matrix P. But again, all we would do to figure out what happens three months later is we would take the market share, we would multiply by the transition matrix, 
and I got these values. So again, it's increasing, but again, by in this case, by uh, even less. And then, well, uh, assuming again this, this transition matrix stays valid, we could figure out what happens four months later. Okay, so it looks like uh, brand A is getting closer to 75%, and its competitors are, you know, their market share is getting closer to 25%. Well, we could compute what happens after five months. Um, I got these values, and I think I got lazy after six months. So it looks like the values are getting really, really close to, uh, so it says that uh, brand A, it's getting really close to, to owning or controlling 75% of the market, and its competitors are getting closer and closer to 25%. Okay, so this is the idea. It looks like our, our state matrices are getting closer and closer to 0.75 and 0.25, right? It looks like it's really, really close to 0.75 and 0.25. And one thing to notice, if we actually take this, this, uh, this matrix 0.75 and 0.25 and multiply it by our transition matrix, we actually get the exact same values back, 0.75 and 0.25. So what it says is, it says under this advertising campaign, it says once they get to 75% of the market, owning 75% of the market, it says nothing's going to happen. They're not going to lose any of the market, but they're not going to gain any either. Okay, so this matrix S, this is what's called a stationary matrix. Okay, we're multiplying by this transition matrix, and we're getting the exact same thing back. We call that matrix S stationary matrix and our, our system here our Markov chain we say that this is uh, it's said to be at steady state right nothing's happening in terms of the market share you're at a steady state you're staying at 75% of the market okay so there's our uh, a little terminology that we had at the beginning so a couple questions here does every Markov chain have a unique stationary matrix that's one question and if a Markov chain has one of these unique stationary, a unique stationary matrix, will the successive state matrices always approach this stationary matrix? Okay, so um, you know it's got it's got this initial it's got this stationary matrix. Maybe the market share could have been who knows what at the beginning. If we always start multiplying by this transition matrix, will we eventually arrive? for example, at that same market share. And it turns out, no, that's not true in general, okay? Um, however, it is true for um, a special type of Markov chain, and it's true for what are called regular Markov chains. Both of these questions are, in fact, uh, we could answer yes to both of these questions, okay? So, so what I'm gonna do in the next video is I'm gonna actually start looking, I'm gonna define what a, a regular Markov chain is, and we're going to look at, uh, at using these regular Markov chains to find a stationary matrix.